Welcome to the PHNX Sun Devil Show. I'm Anthony Tocher. This guy, this guy right yeah, here. You are. This is a champion. Yeah, I am. Right here. It's Big Pokey himself, Shane Diefenbach. We got DJ Danielle making all the magic happen. DJ Danielle. Behind the Mac making today. Making the magic happen. You could call it the Maction. She's a wizard. She's a wizard. Expelli She's a DJ. Ominous. Guys, do us a favor. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and leave a five-star review. If you're listening on audio, let us know. What you like about this podcast or what you want to see moving forward. Also, while we're just handing out favors, maybe head over to gophnx.com. Click the little Die Hard tab. And then when you click that tab, you're going to see everything that you unlock when you become a Die Hard chain. Yeah, lots of good stuff. Any? Did you drink water today? Viewership? I Viewers? I, I, I drank water today. I, I know you do. You're, yeah. you're a hydrated man. Yeah, I'm a very hydrated boy. Make sure to drink water, guys. I know it's 68 outside, but still drink some water. <laughs> Stay hydrated. Do it. Here's your do daily it. reminder. Drink water. Become a diehard. Do all the things. Slap the floor and yell, defense. defense. Oh, don't do that. No? I, I know that doesn't sound like that? good. No, you're probably right. You're probably right. Shane, it's the last day before spring football. Mm -hmm. Spring football starts tomorrow. There's been three Christmas Eves. What, March well, two. Madness? There's been two. Christ there's, well, there's three Christmas Eves this year. Okay, the, what the, are the they? Day, the night before March Madness. Okay. Tonight. Yeah. And Christmas Eve. I'm so excited. For I'm Christmas literally Eve? so no, 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 no. I'm oh. so excited for spring football. I'm just excited to get back out there. And, and like we've already talked to the assistant coaches, drills. the offensive coaches, the defensive coaches, Kenny Dillingham. Uh, now it really is like the first time to see a lot of these guys get after it on the field in spring. A lot of these position um, battles are going to get started at corner, defensive line, linebacker, safety, like realistically every single position, I would say outside of running back. There's competition for that starting yeah. role. And even your starting running back isn't really a running back. Yeah. He's just he kind can, of an everything guy. And there's so much depth already yeah. at that position. Um, but it's just it's a fun, fun time to to yeah. get into college football. And for the Arizona State defense, that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So many additions uh, to that unit, really, on all three phases. Yeah. For Before we get into what the coaches had to say, difference makers, et cetera, what – do you want to see the Arizona State defense grow most on um, from from really what you saw last year? First and second down. <laughs> like, I I don't want to get gashed on first and second down. Yeah. That's a lot of the biggest problems last year. Um, I think the aggression is going to be dialed up again. Like, I, I think they're going to continue to be an aggressive team. Um, but, yeah, it, it, those early downs were killing them last year. Yeah. Um, and your, your third and longs weren't great either. But... Your third and tens are usually pretty good. Which were far and few between. Yeah. Anytime you got that. Those. Arizona State was. I'm just talking um, to my ass. I don't even know what, if their third and ten conversion rate was great. No, it was. They're, um, they were better in some areas in 2023 than they were in 2022, specifically in the ground game. Yeah. But they got gashed by opposing quarterbacks. Part of that was just the conference that they were in with the, the quarterback level in the Pac-12 was crazy. I would definitely like to see more turnovers. And as, I, yeah. as I've said many times, it is. A mainly luck-based thing, I'm going to say. I'm sticking by it. Turnover luck's a real thing. Like Sometimes a pass is going to get batted and fall right into your defensive tackle's hands, and sometimes it's going to get batted and fall into the quarterback's hands, or it's just going to go down. Uh, sometimes a, a player is going to have butterfingers in one game, and they might cough up a loose ball. Or the ball is an oblong shape. It might bounce a certain way, and, and it, it is a luck thing. But, you know... To get in positions to get turnovers isn't a luck-based thing. You have to be aggressive like they are, but you also have to be talented. And I think this team is a lot more talented. There's a lot of names that we're going to talk about that I'm really excited to see uh, in, in this coming year. They're going to have to step in a much bigger role, especially on this defense. This defense is, you know, you're keeping the same scheme, but you're also going to have to change it a little bit because yeah. of the teams you're facing. And obviously there's a lot of personnel change. Yeah, a lot of personnel change. And we'll get into to what Brian Ward and everybody had to say about the the defense kind of moving forward. But just taking a look, again, you mentioned the turnover luck. 
Only nine turnovers last year. It was a team in Arizona State that really did get gashed through the air. Talk about Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., Shador Sanders, et cetera. I think they did definitely improve when it comes to that secondary specifically. Part of that, though, part of being able to force turnovers in the secondary starts up front with the defensive line and the pressure Arizona State did have a big loss with B.J. Green. Yeah. Um, was tied for the sack lead with Prince Dorba um, last season. But Arizona State does return two of their three top sack leaders in Prince Dorba um, and Clayton Smith. Yeah. Excited to see those two again in the spring. Yeah, they, you know, it's not a great thing to lose a defensive lineman that was your best defensive lineman on a defensive line that wasn't very good. Yeah. Uh, that being said, I think that Brian Ward's scheme allows – a little leeway mm -hmm. in that regard because I think you're going to be able to use a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. Um, getting Clayton Smith back and healthy for a full year would be awesome. Prince Dorba took some big strides, but you're also looking at this interior defensive line and you're like, we need more from you too. Yeah. And, you know, that was a very, very shallow room last year with injuries and just with talent, I would say. Uh, and I think you got some bigger pieces this year to build on. It's interesting to, to, kind of just dissect what Arizona State lost in the offseason. You talk about a guy in Trey Brown and Chris Edmonds. They were two of the top tacklers mm. for Arizona State. Yeah. Um, again, a sack leader in B.J. Green leaving, and, and it's just you lose Bro Torrance, like your number one corner. Like Realistically, Arizona State lost a lot of talent, but it almost feels like they're set up in a better position this year than they were last year, despite losing some of that talent, with which I think is going to be huge. They get some young guys. They get additions in the transfer portal. However, there are some key returners to this group, and I think a lot of what Brian Ward wants to do this spring is going to focus a lot on what a guy like Mason Williams or Ed Woods um, or, or you know Tate Romney are able to really provide for this unit in terms of it, it needs to be less learning and more reactionary. It needs to come almost as like second nature to some of these guys, and I think that really starts in the spring. And for Brian Ward... Like it, it is another year in the system that I think does need to be elevated. You talk about the chaos, you talk about the pressure. There just wasn't enough of that in 2023 for Arizona State. Do yeah. you feel confident heading into spring ball that there are those guys on the roster that can provide that chaos, that pressure for the Sun Devils? Yeah, yeah. as I said, I think a lot of the pressure comes from the scheme. Like if you have good, good stunt packages and just – a good scheme overall and a scheme that you can learn for not just one full year, but basically two full years now yeah. uh, helps. Kenny talked a lot about language and how he wants to keep it consistent over both, you know, both the uh, defense and the offense. And I think that's a big thing too, is just retaining some of these guys and getting them back in the same scheme and defense that they played in last year. It doesn't have to necessarily be the exact same. As I said, it's going to, there's going to be some changes, but just, you know, you feel more comfortable with, when you play with the same guys consistently and the defensive line is such a unique one because, you know, it's not like wide receiver or quarterback where, you know, if you're a good enough freshman, you're going to play most of the time on the defensive side of the ball. Like, especially in the trenches, if you are a freshman, you're red shirting, which yeah. is how it is. Like you have to beef up. Um, and TJ five wasn't allowed to beef up last year. <laughs> I mean, he did beef up, but he wasn't allowed to just take time to beef up. He had to play and beef, yeah. which is not easy to do. <laughs> To play in speaking of speaking from experience yeah no like, yeah, i'll eat a double quarter pounder and then i gotta go play <laughs> my tummy hurts <laughs> it's a difficult thing man it's a difficult thing no Certainly. no but being serious i mean you you do have a couple a couple of guys coming back that should be i mean we have mentioned clayton smith and prince dorba but you also have you know garen stansbury who's been here for so yeah. long that he's he's a large man yeah and he and he should be able to help you have elijah o'neill who can can help create that chaos and and you know really draw some attention to him to allow a Ed Woods or Mason Williams to come off the edge. Like yeah. playing in a scheme for a year plus is under, is an underrated thing. Oh, for sure. For sure. And and I think some of the guys that you mentioned, right? Like a Garrett Sainsbury or an Elijah O'Neal, they're, uh, they're not expected to go out there and be superstars, but I think they are going to be interesting question marks for the Sun Devils because specifically along that defensive line, there are going to be some guys that need to make plays pretty early on. Uh, especially if they want to see playing time in, in 2024. But you bring up the second year of this system for Arizona State. They're able to retain the majority of their position coaches. Obviously, a, a change along the defensive line, but previous defensive line coaches still uh, with the program, to, to my knowledge. But 
Arizona State does need to make some big strides, and that starts in the spring. This is what Arizona State defensive coordinator Brian Ward had to say about his goals for this ASU defense heading into the spring. The efficiency of everything, not spending so much time relearning. It's more reemphasizing and reinstalling what, we, what we've done. And, and really, um, I, I want to see our leadership, the guys that have done it before, I want to see them take the next step where it's, you know, it's not like 50 first dates. It's, hey, this is what we did. They won a spring ball last year. Here we go. You know what I mean? This is what we emphasized at the end of last season. We're not having to re, like, re hammer that home. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's just the reinforcement of the, the standards and the values that we've, uh, you know, that we, that we laid the foundation for. And, and, and we showed at times last year. But, you know, I just really want to see more consistency. And I really want to see more just execution of our defense on a consistent basis. I mean, just in terms of being consistent and being more efficient, like you brought up earlier, this is an Arizona State defense that, yes, they were improved in 2023 on the ground, but they got worse in the past game, yeah. uh, opposing quarterbacks completing 65% of their passes. And part of that is, like, it, it felt like they thought too much. Yeah, and there's just so much time to throw, and you can't give yeah. ta quarterbacks as talented as there were in the Pac-12 best quarterback conference ever um, <laughs> as, as much time as they did. Um, but yeah, it just it takes reps, man, and rap, reps with consistency. Reps where you know the the second defensive lineman behind Clayton Smith doesn't have to be that one defensive lineman every other week, and yeah. and doesn't have to step up. You know, and I would say as the year went along, sometimes the defense looked like it got better, and sometimes it was terrible. I mean, you think to those games against UCLA and Washington, you're like, what the hell? Hey, it looked How? like one of the best defenses in the in conference the, in the country. Yeah, like. They held the University of Washington essentially completely healthy to no touchdowns. Yeah. Nobody did that. No one does that. Yeah, I mean, they crazy. are just Washington kryptonite, like it's just how it's been over the past couple of years. But still, you, you think back to those games and you're like, wow, this can be something special. And then, you know, the next game they go ahead and lay a stinker and they give up 35 points. And you're like, or like 50 something to Utah. Yeah. And you're, uh, how did that happen? Yeah. Well, how it happened is inconsistency and injuries, you know. Yeah. The guys that were having really big games at the linebacker and, and defensive end position were not there because mm -hmm. they were injured. And, mm -hmm. and you know, there, there might not be that much of a talent gap between your first and your second team. However, your first team practiced more with the same people in the, as the second team. And it's not just as easy as a platoon swap. Like this second edge rusher doesn't know the tendencies of the edge rusher that he didn't practice with as much on the first team. And yeah. And that compounds. Uh, Rudy asked, does this team feel different compared to last year? Uh, I, I mean, it, it's still pretty early to tell, but I would say just, again, looking at the the roster, the depth chart, as we, we can kind of go through it, like it does feel like a team that does have a little bit more depth across the board versus last year. It felt like there were very specific positions that were heavy on talent yeah. and it was almost trying to make up for what it lacked a, a, across the offensive line, the defensive line, whatever. Uh -huh. I, I, I think that, I mean, you can look at the numbers and, and, and players all you want. Like that's bottom line. That's, that, that's what's going to win you football games yeah. is, is you, your talent. But a huge part of this year is Kenny said, they can just focus on football this year. They don't have to focus on the other things. Like last year was him building a culture and instilling a culture. And I think he did a great job of that. Like even when they were losing games, you still saw, how well players responded like this team got their season taken away from them a week before their first game or whatever that yeah. was like they were basically told like by the university days. three days that you are playing for nothing and and obviously they they weren't playing for nothing yeah. like, but at the end of the day they couldn't play in a bowl game and the seniors like it's hard to have a team respond well to that, and they did that. So I think Kenny did a great job last year instilling a culture. Yeah, and now you got to focus on winning football games. Yeah, it, it's something that Ralph and I talked a lot about when we were doing some of the post game shows. Is it felt kind of crazy to to watch the team respond week after week when in reality they were dealing with a bunch of injuries. They were a two in seven football team going yeah. into to games that they were two touchdown underdogs and they were still fighting every single game. And specifically, again, focusing on the defense, like some of the numbers are skewed, right? Like Arizona State gave up 31.8 points per game in 2023. That ranked 110th out of 133 teams. Like it, it's skewed, A, because of injuries, turnovers, but also Kenny Dillingham and the aggression of that Arizona State offense going for it on fourth down. 
uh, and really setting themselves up in, in a difficult position because he believed in that defense that did have really phenomenal games against a Washington, against the UCLA. And again, I think this season specifically, there is going to be an emphasis and there's going to be an upgrade on that Arizona State defense. I think fans are going to see it. I think coaches are going to see it. I think everybody is going to see it. And I think part of it is going to be there are superstars on this defense. And we'll talk about those guys here in just a little bit. Not just us, but those position coaches also have a lot to say uh, about some new memories of this Arizona State defense. But one of the difference makers for us, Shane, Gila River Resorts and Casinos, because literally nobody, nobody does it better than Gila River Resorts and Casinos. They offer an authentic and immersive experience with an I'm unprecedented a, I'm level. immersed when I'm there. Are you? I'm so fully, immersed. Fully immersed? Yep. You strike me as somebody that when you get to like a slot machine at Gila, like you go full avatar mode, legs crossed, you're like this. Like my hair is connected to the machine. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Just... Exactly. Speaking, I mean, that's what happens. The Navi tongue. That, that's exactly what happens when you get to Gila River Resorts and casinos. They do have an unprecedented level of entertainment and excitement that you're not going to find Igratua. anywhere else that's what they sound in like. the <laughs> desert. They don't just set a high bar. They've set the highest bar in the valley with their state-of-the-art gaming floor. It's got it all with over 800 slot machines, 15 blackjack tables, and live table games, not to mention Arizona's largest casino sports book that Shane's going to get to here in just a little bit. They've got plenty of dining options as well. It's a great place for a staycation. Head over to Gila River Resorts and Casinos and let them show you what Next Level is all about. You do you at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Visit playatgila.com for more details. Speaking of high bars, uh, the, the bar at the BetMGM Sportsbook there is is literally high. It's on the second <laughs> floor. Like you're elevated. It's a cool place. It's a very cool place. Their their chairs are comfy as hell. And you're sitting there like, damn. I, I'm always a little sad when I'm there because I'm like, is this it? Is this the pinnacle? Is this the best moment of my life? Is everything going to go downhill? But then I come back and I'm like, nope. It's just it's what it does. Yeah, no, it's, it me is what it is. Me when I'm at the BetMGM Sportsbook, me when I'm not. Me mm. when I'm at it, me when I'm not. Like, you know, you just got to get back. It's there. life-changing. It's a life-changing It is life-changing. And so is, so is the money you can win on the BetMGM Sportsbook app. That's it's, valid. It's... It's, and I'm going to give you a winner here in a second. Um, but first, let's get you for some free money. All you got to do to get some free money with BetMGM is download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android. Sign up and deposit at least $10 into your BetMGM Sportsbook account. Place your first wager and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if it loses. If the bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wager is settled. Sign up for BetMGM and use that bonus code PHNX. But first, I got to give you a parlay pick, guys. I'm here Here's for it. Here's what it is. I'm here for it. It's for the games on Thursday. Thursday okay. and Friday, I think. I think this game's are whatever. It's for the Sweet Sixteen. I'm taking the under in the Clemson and Arizona game. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. One fifty one's the total. I just Clemson's a very stingy defensive team, and Arizona is. I feel like is going to get it a little nervous because they're like we're that much closer to reaching something we haven't done since, you know, Bop it was the number <laughs> one product in the U.S. and and Furbies were in every McDonald's meal. Uh, so I'm taking the under one fifty one there. I'm taking Creighton money line. Creighton, you can get them at plus 2,500 at BetMGM to win the whole thing, and I kind of like that. Uh, plus 125, they're playing Tennessee, and then I'm taking the Zags, plus 4.5 against Purdue. All those games together parlay an odd of plus 738. Get that while you can and sign up for BetMGM. Use that bonus code PHNX. Place your first bet. MGM Sports or Glazer in the BetMGM Sports mobile app for at least $10. You'll receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if your bet loses. Check out the show notes for full details. Now listen to me, your beautiful man, talk about the disclaimer. Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369. New York. Call 1-800-327-5050. Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF. Iowa. 1-800-981-0023. Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Look, getting into some of those defensive playmakers, uh, Thanks, JJ. you could talk about the the guys, the, the young bucks coming from. Uh, the class of 2024, you could talk about it's returners. Specifically, I, I want to start with the pride and joy of what I feel like is this transfer class and Cole Martin. Me? Sorry, no, you're like fifth on that list. Rats. Uh, Cole Martin is just an absolute dog. It's somebody that every single coach at Arizona State has so much praise for on that defensive side of the ball, Kenny Dillingham um, as well. It's a dude that in 2023 had 21 total tackles and an INT, uh, played in 11 games for a really, really, really deep, talented Oregon team. And... Cole Martin is a perfect example of what Kenny Dillingham wants to do at Arizona State in terms of bringing the most talented Arizona high school athletes back to Tempe or get them to Tempe before they even 
depart for a school like Oregon. Uh, he was the number one cornerback in Arizona by 24-7 sports in his class in the 24-7 sports composite, ESPN and Rivals. He was a top five recruit in the state, number three by ESPN, number three by Rivals. Um, like This is a kid that literally is one of the most talented defensive backs to come out of the state of Arizona in the last decade, and he's back at Arizona State. And in reality... Back in Arizona. Back, yeah. Back in Arizona, at Arizona State. And he is... I mean, he's going to be a, a bona fide starter for the Sun Devil defense. Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is a huge ad because you lost uh, Roe Torrance. Yeah. And, and he is a... He's a prototypical outside corner. 5'10", 180. Um, him, and, him and Ed are... Like that's your that could be your prototypical one two cornerback duo. Um, yeah, he's he's a huge piece. But again, like take everything off the field or on the field of what he's gonna bring, which is gonna be a lot. Off the field, this just it sends a message. Like Kenny's not bullshitting you guys. Like he wants to he wants to keep the talent in Arizona. You you look around the country at at talented football players that left the state of Arizona and went to go thrive at other places and you could list them for hours but it's not just in football it's in basketball too it's everywhere like you need to try to keep these guys and getting them back in the portals a step in the right direction but getting them originally to commit to your school as a freshman is is where you want to be and i think they're going to get there and this is just evidence of that yeah 510 180 almost a, a five star coming out of high school at basha um and his prospect rating as a transfer was around the same level yeah. like he was exactly what you thought he was going to be. Yeah, and, and it's funny you bring him up as a prototypical outside corner because that's not where he's going to play. He's going to play at that nickel spot yeah. uh, for Arizona State and Brian Ward's defense. And it's, it was just – it was interesting to hear what Brian Ward had to say about Cole Martin because this is a guy that has coached across the country. He's coached NFL-level talent, and he was just like – grinning from ear to ear didn't even have like the right yeah. words to describe yeah. a guy like cole martin but enough of me talking about it this is what brian ward had to say uh, about the golden goose defensively in cole martin well he, he just brings a bigger presence at nickel i mean he he's about 15 pounds heavier than the guy that we played you know most of most of the time last year um you know he has a great football pedigree but, you know, I'm just excited to see him grow in our defense. And, you know, he really is. I mean, it's funny, Coach Dillingham and I were talking about it yesterday. Like, you don't really recruit nickels. It's just something you don't because they're kind of an anomaly. And, and the nickels usually that are, like, guys that you just recruit, recruit to play nickel, um, there's maybe only, you know, three to five of those guys in the entire country every year in every recruiting class. And they're highly recruited by specific programs. And... So I just haven't made a habit of it. Um, when I was at uh, Syracuse, I, you know, I recruited um, Afatu Melifanwu and, and, uh, and Trill Williams to be nickels. Um, but I really recruited them to be corners. Well, both of them, Trill turned into a nickel for us at Syracuse, and I was with the Dolphins. And, and uh, Afatu was a corner for us at Syracuse, and now he's playing nickel and safety. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard to find, like, here's your prototype nickel. Okay, your nickel is a guy that... He can play man in the slot on third down when you need to play man. He's big enough that he can get a good reroute. He can play his own. He has great short area quickness where he can tackle out in space. So if you get too big and too long, you're not a great spatial tackler. If you get too big and too long, you may not be a great, uh, you know, level one, level two man route guy. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, so it, it's he's one of those anomalies. He really is. He's, he's just he's kind of a rare breed. So. He really is. He is a unicorn at nickel. So um, we're fortunate to have him. I'm, I'm excited to see his growth. All Pac-12 animal team. A, go a goose and a unicorn. We <laughs> love that. It, yeah, it is interesting to see he was recruited strictly to play nickel. I mean, yeah. they got a lot of guys that can play nickel. You, you think of Montana Warren and Keith Abney, the two stud freshmen last year, who all, could also play nickel. Yeah. Um, but a guy like Cole Martin, who is built like a nickel, and is going to play nickel is, is is really fun. So not an outside corner. Excuse what I said earlier. A nickel corner, and and exactly that. I thought they were going to be able to use him in multiple ways, but it sounds like Brad Moore just wants him as a nickel. Yeah, and it's interesting to see that, right? Because which is the best position in football, by the way. It is the it, it, by far the best position in football. And it's such a difficult position yeah. to play, right? Obviously, kind of what what Brian Ward was going off of, and Brian Carrington was talking about 
just some of the guys that are going to be in that competition, right? It's going to be a Cole Martin, Keith Abney, and then a Mason Williams. Those are the three heading into spring that are going to be competing for that nickel spot. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to kind of see because they are all kind of built a little bit differently, yeah. right? Like Keith Abney is the bigger of that trio. And I, I just, I'm interested to see like how they're utilized in specific packages because I feel like Cole Martin is going to be your traditional nickel that you're going to be throwing out there more often than not. But who knows? You get to a third and long type of situation. Do we see a guy like Mason Williams? Do we see a guy like Keith Abney um, or like a first and 10? Is it Keith Abney because he's a little bit bigger? Do yeah. we see him sliding in there? Yeah, for for all of you who don't know exactly what a nickel does, just think of it as a combo between a corner linebacker and like a box safety. Like they yeah. can kind of do whatever they want. They can kind of fly all over the field. They're responsible for a lot of the shorter stuff um, and run defense, run support as well. So yeah, that's going to be that can be so fun. And a lot of times, as we, it's what Jordan Clark played last exactly. year. Exactly. And a lot of times, what we saw Jordan Clark do last year was come off the edge and yeah. blitz unpre- unblocked. Uh, and fuck, if you could, I mean, Jordan Clark hit hard for his size. Cole Martin is 5'10, 180. Like, that's yeah. a big, big guy. And I'm sure he's going to beef up even exactly. more. Exactly. 5'10, 180 before he hits a summer before, with Joe, right? Yeah. So, like, it seriously. And Joe is, has been has been feeding these guys something insane. <laughs> he's been feeding them they've been working. blocks of they've been dense working. nutrients just every day. And think of it like a one up, like they're just leveling up like Mario. I mean, Ed Woods has turned into Ed Ed Redwoods. There you go. <laughs> Come Ed on. Oak Tree, Come if on. you will. No, it's Cole Martin is not the only one in this Arizona State secondary that I think is going to make an immediate impact. You talk a, a, another guy um, in that ASU secondary, specifically at that safety position, Xavier Alford, a guy who, again, the position coaches love. He was a part of this Arizona State team last year, but didn't play because of the entire NCAA situation. Yeah. Xavier Alford has been playing college football for a long, long time now. Yes. And I know this group, this just the, the defensive position coaches are so excited to get him on the field. This is what Brian Carrington had to say just about Xavier Alford as a player at ASU. I'm excited for Xavier. I, I told him today, I was like, you've been in college half of my career, you know, so I'm going to year 10 in, uh, in college football and, you know, having Xavier on at Texas and having Xavier on at USC and now having Xavier on here. It's like, you know, I've kind of felt bad for him, you know, last year not being able to play, but he's a guy that knows how to delay gratification. He's a guy that's channeling all of that testosterone and passion to be out on that field and, you know, just watch out because, I mean, you're getting a guy that's going to be a vocal leader on that back end. You're going to get a guy that's going to be passionate. He's a guy that works his ass off any chance he gets, you know. So we're going to feel the difference of Xavier and Alfred being in the back end, especially from a communicating standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, from a playmaking standpoint. Xavier is that guy. Yeah, when he was asked about Xavier Alford, his eyes lit up. He's just so excited to see him play this year. Mm-hmm. And a guy who you got to see practice a little bit last year, but never really got to get some real reps because of the NCAA stuff. And holy smokes, he is a he is a talent. Yeah, he is a talent. He's not just a, a talent like when they want to load the box on first and ten. Like this is a guy in Xavier Alford that is a kind of a ball hawk safety. Yeah. He had three ints in his one year at SC. Didn't play a whole lot at, at Texas in twenty twenty. But, like, this is a dude that we saw in the spring, whether he was going to play or not, was a top two, three yeah. player on the Arizona State defense w- heading into the when, end of the year. When he gets downhill, he runs like a snowball gaining momentum. Yeah. Like, it's insane how fast this guy can move and his top end speed. And then, oh, he's he's a fun player to watch. He's he's one of those guys that, you know, he might not have, and I'm, and he definitely could, but might not have a crazy storied career when it's all said and done, but you go back and like 10 years down the road, you're like Xavier and Alfred 24, 25 highlights. And you're like, dude, this guy used to hit so hard. Yeah, absolutely. He is that type of player. And I think something that he's the perfect type of player that you want to try defensively to build a culture around, right? Because you talk about Brian Ward's scheme, the chaos, the pressure, and you talk about what Kenny Dillingham is trying to build at Arizona state in terms of a culture and just a football brand. Right. And I think he is somebody Xavier and Alford that brings that energy in practice and we know Arizona state just talking to, to some of the players, right? They practice now way differently than they did under Herm way different than they did under Todd. So to get a guy that comes in and will hit at a hundred percent that will run downhill and give you everything he's got the very first week or two weeks of, of pads and spring ball, like 
that is something that was lacking yeah. at Arizona State to get a guy like Xavier Alford who can kind of do it all. Mm -hmm. Like ironic enough, just kind of moving off of the the Cole Martin discussion of how he's a unicorn. The back end of, of the Arizona State defense with Xavier Alford and Shamari Simmons, like that, those guys can really do it all. And Simmons like was at points the leading tackler for this team. Yeah, he was the leading tackler for Arizona he State ended last the year. year. He ended the year the leading tackler. Wild. That shouldn't happen. Your free safety shouldn't be your leading tackle. Him and Chris Edmonds were the top two. Yeah, which <laughs> tells you all you need to know. Like, they, they, the ball was getting to the third level every single yeah. play. Uh, now you get a guy who, and Chris Edmonds was was a great guy to have at your strong spot, but he was less of a, a he wasn't the same, same type of player as Alfred is. And yeah. Alfred's going to really be able to love that box and, and hopefully have more tackles in the way you want your strong safeties to have tackles, not because they need to, to, to stop the shot play or or tackle the running back after he gets to the second level. Yeah, no, I'm, Xavier Alford, I've been pretty consistent with this. Outside of the the, the linebackers uh, heading into the spring, Xavier Alford's a guy that you just know that he's going to show up with a chip on his shoulder. A dude that didn't play last year, he's kind of been all over the map. Like, he's been in college football for some time now. Like, he's got something, I feel like, that he wants to prove to not just the country, but to the team, to the yeah. coaches, to be like, I'm still that guy. Yeah. Like I'm the guy that I was at Texas, the guy that I was at USC mm -hmm. and, and he could be that level of player. Um, I'm just, I, every time I say it, man, I'm just so damn excited. College football's back. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to go to practice tomorrow. I know it's going to be fun. It's going to be so damn fun. Something that we are definitely looking forward to Shane, but I don't know about you. I wake every morning and I'm excited to see you. I'm excited to see DJ Danielle, D -D -D DJ Danielle. And then I'm excited to stop at circle K because look, Every day I'm getting something different. It used to be that I'm just going to take advantage of the deals that they have on their energy drinks. But you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be better. It's not, not drinking energy drinks. That's my dog right here. We got, the, we got the Gatorades. We got all sorts of fun snacks that they have um, at your local Circle K. And the best part about it is they're so damn affordable. And they've got locations just about everywhere. So if that's not enough, they're going to help you save money on gas with Inner Circle. You guys can save 25 cents per gallon on your first five fill-ups and then save three cents per gallon every single day after that. And we were talking about the snacks earlier. You guys are going to get every sixth free on a selection of Circle K products. We're talking pizza, coffee, ice cold fountain drinks, and more they've got a bunch of little treats for you shane over at Dude, circle i'm k. such a big fan of treats you are a big treats guy join inner circle for free by downloading the circle k app today terms and conditions apply our participating participating locations uh visit circle k.com for details patio season is here for just a little bit longer um it is perfect outside today i think the high is 69 nice and the wind is blowing it is mm, it's so good and right after the rain too beautiful it's perfect and and if you want to enjoy that you should head over to our friends over at Illegal Pete's because they have the best patios for vibes. You can get some nice margs. You get some amazing food and just some elite vibes. Their queso is holy smokes. I always compare their queso to like the dankest mac and cheese. It has like a mac and cheese type sauce to it. Like it's a thickness to it. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so good. Viscosity. It's amazing. It's the best. Queso I've ever had, plain and simple. And Illegal Pizza is here to bring you a win with their legendary sound check deal. Bring in your ticket stub for any ticketed event and get a draft beer or house margarita for a penny. Illegal Pizza wants to celebrate with you, whether it's a pregame or postgame party. They've got you covered on all your game day needs. Must purchase an adult entry to redeem Illegal Pizza sound check deal. Illegal Pizza, your go to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer. It's a margarita Monday, Taco Tuesday tomorrow, guys. Go wacky, check out. Wacky, wacky. Burrito Bowl Wednesday. There you go. They Wowido. Wacky Wowido. Wacky Wowido Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> tortilla Thursday. Oh my goodness. But, um, well, that could be Tortilla Tuesday. Fresh Pico de Gallo Friday. Mm. You got Saturday for me? Spicy. Spicy Saturday. Spicy Mark Saturday. Mm. Spicy Mark Sunday. Mm. Back to back spicy yeah, Mark. And days. you're just like, oh, why does my tummy hurt? Yeah, it's because you a lot of spices. Yeah, a lot man. of spices. A lot of them spices, especially coming right off the the fresh Pico day. Mm. Man, that's a lot. That's a yeah. lot going on. Uh, but getting back to ASU football, I, I mentioned a little bit earlier the position group that I'm most hey, excited, you're excited to see. I love the I love the LBs. You're just a linebacker guy. It, it's it's a position that I feel like Arizona State really really um, they just weren't a overall great group last year for for a variety of different reasons. You talk about some of the transfers that they tried to bring in. Um, what Tate Romney had a successful season. Juju Mitchell, we know about what happened with him uh, happened in, him. in the spring. Trey uh, Brown was elite. He was elite, but and you lose him now. You lose a guy in Trey no, Brown. Gone. 
he gone. He was a top three tackler for Arizona State last year. We need another linebacker with the nose piercing now. Do you? Do we? Yeah. And a, great, a baby had a great nose piercing. Nose piercing. I, I, I had no comment on the baby, but <laughs> okay, yeah. there you go. Like we don't need one with the baby. You yeah, don't need. Fine. <laughs> no, we need to head into the portal. We need to get one with a child immediately. <laughs> we need a baby in the portal. <laughs> <laughs> no, some of the some of the linebackers that AJ Cooper and uh, that's how I'm announcing it when I have a kid. I'm how gonna, I'm going to announce that like I got it. From you the got portal. it from the portal. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness! We got a five star recruit in the portal. <laughs> it's just a baby. Yeah. It's going to be on campus in about eight and a half months. That's awesome. Eight months. Oh my god! He's got an official visit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do a little graphic. In. That'd be that'd be amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> oh, uh, but some of the linebackers that Arizona State did get from the transfer portal: uh, Keyshawn Elliott from New Mexico State, Jordan Crook from Arkansas, uh, Zyrus Fiaseu from San Diego State. Whoa. Uh, Fiaseu and uh, Elliott. Great pronunciation, my dog. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Um, and Keyshawn Elliott, both hundred tackle guys at their respective schools last year. Jordan Crook brings the SEC experience, um, and, and these are guys that immediately improve that room on top of returning a guy in, in Tate Romney that did have a really, really solid season last year. Talk about a younger guy in KV on Thunderbird um, who didn't okay. play a whole lot last year. Talk about him. Built like a Will Schaefer replica in, mm. in my mind. Um, I oh, know yeah, you lost Will Schaefer too. Yeah, he lost Will Schaefer. But lost he didn't Will really Schaefer play halfway, last year. Well, he, he transferred halfway through the year, right? Yeah, he entered the portal. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just a weird, just a weird season at that linebacker position. Mm -hmm. So, there was an emphasis to go out there and get some really, really um, just talented linebackers in the portal. Thank you, Shane. Uh, this is what linebacker coach A.J. Cooper had to say about the new additions at that linebacker spot. They're all very aggressive, which is, is I think it's going to help us in the run game. You know what I mean? Like, they, they've all, uh, I think, number one, credit to those guys, they've all bought in very quickly. Like, Coach Joe just uh, ran their numbers as far as, like, their body weights and the lean muscle mass, and all have had really good off seasons so far. And anytime you're bringing new players in, whether it's a true freshman or transfer, how quickly are they going to adapt? Kind of, I don't want to say wash away what they did in the past, but be willing to buy into a new strength staff, coaching staff, academics. Does that make sense? Yeah. And they've all done that really well. You know what I mean? And you're seeing, like they said, Keyshawn put on like 10 pounds of muscle and lost eight pounds of fat. You know what I mean? Like that type of transition tells a guy that's ready to invest and be all in. And, and you're seeing that when they're watching film, when we're going through these walkthroughs and doing some of the other things just how much they're willing to learn and ask questions and, and really get on the field and understand what they're doing. It's interesting to, to see some of these position coaches talk about their respective rooms, just because that safety position, we know how deep that is. We know they've got some returners, the same thing kind of at that corner spot. Like you bring back Mason Williams, Ed Woods, Keith Abney, some of those younger guys, but that linebacker room really is like a fresh start. It feels like this season, so I think it is important for for a guy like AJ Cooper to to go out there and find guys that are willing to almost be molded to what he and Brian Ward want to do in the scheme. Yeah, you want to have guys that obviously work well in your your scheme, and then and Kenny doesn't re recruit guys that one won't work well because of a personality fit. Their whole thing. I mean, all of the all the coaches said it. You, you want to focus on recruiting the person first. You want good people here, uh, and that helps. But a scheme fit also helps. And and these guys that as Cooper alluded to well fit in the scheme very well, but it's exciting to to hear so much. And I know I was joking with you when that clip was playing. Like no coach is gonna outright say like this guy is just fucking he's a slob. He's not eating right. He looks terrible. Like, yeah. No one's gonna say that, but it is good to hear them like continually praise the strength and conditioning staff and and how bought in the players are and. It's like the third time I mentioned it, but it all goes back to the culture. And that's why getting the culture right your first year was so important because you need to have players that buy in. Kenny was talking about it in his presser that, you know, last year it was like, okay, there are some guys late. Like, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. You can't be late. Uh, and and that that they had a like a tracker to keep track of if people were missing being late to their tutoring sessions or late to a meeting or God forbid practice. And it was a huge deal. Now it's like that better not like, like that's not happening. It, yeah. it won't happen. It's it's it, it's not even a thing they think about anymore because they instilled that culture and and that goes to why all these players are bought in in their offseason programs and getting bigger and stronger and dropping fat and gaining muscle is because they're bought in. They don't just want to become better players. They want to become a better team. Yeah. And that is so important when you're a first and second year head coach. And you're not just getting guys at positions now that you can see after one year of Kenny. You're not just getting guys with potential. Yeah. You're getting guys that have kind of proved it, right? You, you talk about Keyshawn Elliott, over 100 tackles on New Mexico State. 
easily their best defensive player well, alongside with, mascot. Uh, the Aggies, right? Right. Uh, along with Miles Rouser, who who played for New Mexico State. So you're able to get is two that the guy they call Ghost? Yes. Dude, Those that are the is two guys. He's got a neck awesome. tattoo. Like a that goes like all he's is it yeah, a ghost? It's no. crazy. No, I don't no. think it's a ghost. Ghost um, Rouser? Yeah. Yeah. Put a B in front of that. Yeah, you I was about a, to say that Mario was boss. Those um uh it, two of the best players defensively for New Mexico State and then Fiaseu for for San Diego State. A dude that was 2023 All Mountain West honorable mention, 2023 San Diego State's MVP, um, and the Defensive Player of the Year for San Diego That's State. Pretty good for a San Diego State defense that we know, like regardless of what they do as a program year in year out, that defense is known for being a hard hitting, aggressive, like just defensive machine. So you're able to go get a guy at a key position that was San Diego State's best player, and that's why I think again, just talking about Keyshawn. Um, and Zyrus, that's without even mentioning a guy in Jordan Crook that has a giant chip on his shoulder, not playing a whole lot at Arkansas, um, and he's got that SEC level experience at a really, really key position for the Sun Devils. That's why I'm so excited for this linebacker spot. But a guy that I think we kind of saw flashes of last year in that first layer of the ASU defense, even when he first got here in the spring, you're like, who is, who that, is guy? that guy? Yeah, that guy doesn't ASU. I told you're Sean, like, oh, a there's million clouds. Times, no, that's that's this guy. That's, He's blocking the sun. That's CJ fight. Yep. Yeah, no, that I told Sean because He's got action figures. He he does have action figures. Um, ASU doesn't get those types of defensive tackles. No, they don't get defensive the mountain, linemen that look like that. The mountain men, the mountain men, and not because they live in the mountains it's because they look like mountains. CJ fight is can, you, can, can I get his measurables real fast? CJ fight. Yeah, yeah. CJ fight is. Like just did, just not human. He's listed at uh, six two three fifteen as a sophomore. What was he as a freshman? Probably six two. two I think it was six six, maybe six one. Might have grown an inch, but it was like two eighty eight or two eighty five. I can tell you here something crazy, moment. something not so. And this is an Arizona State defense that we we kind of brought it up earlier. There's not a lot of like guys that went and proved it in 2023 along yeah. this defensive line. So like for CJ fight to come back and have the entire like pressure of being the guy on that ASU defense, I think is going to be interesting to see. It's not even letting, it's fine. Me. Don't it's not worry even letting it. me check it out. Regardless, he's, he's 315 pounds as a, as a 12 year old. <laughs> he's 350 pounds. What an 18, 19 year old. That's insane. What do you want to see out of CJ fight in 2024? I want to see him be, the guy on the line, like genuinely, I like wanna, a Deshaun I, Mallory I, type. I want to see him be the defensive interior defensive lineman. Yeah, like with without a doubt, and I think he can be used as that. I mean, you can teach technique, you can teach somebody to get stronger. You can't teach three hundred raw pounds. size. Yeah, like you can get somebody up to three hundred fifteen pounds, but he's not a three hundred fifteen pounds because he's a massive. Like, and he looks bigger than six two. Yeah, he does. I swear, he's taller than me. And I'm 6'4". I swear, I'm like, hello, CJ. And he's like, hello, Shade. Yeah, he speaks with the voice of God. (laughs) Hello, Keith. Uh, No, he's, yeah. You can't teach teach raw physical size. Yeah. As I said, you can condition guys up to 315. You can beef them up. But he's not a beefed up 315. He can be a beefed up 330. Yeah. He's a beefy five-layer defensive tackle for sure. Yeah, he's a beefy five-layer. He's even even got a little crunch wrap. Oof. Damn. Damn, CJ. No, look, this I'm is hungry. this is a kid that in uh, 2023 we talk a lot about the growth that we saw in, in Jaden Rashada for for uh, a quarterback from his first spring practice to the end of the season. CJ Fight is another young guy on top of a lot of the other young bucks for the Sun Devils that really, really grew from their very first practice to the end, and that's what you want to see. You don't want to ever see them be stagnant. And CJ was growing physically and mentally uh, on the field, and now he's got a new position coach in Deron Reynolds, who does have a whole hell of a lot of experience at a higher level. I sat down with Deron Reynolds and this is what he had to say about what he wants to see from CJ fight heading into 2024. Just, just to continue to take the steps that he's taking right now. Um, I want to increase his pass rush. You know, I want to get him on edges a, a lot more. He's done a great job pushing the pocket. Um, I think the run, run block recognition is starting to get a whole lot better in the run and, and everything else. And I want to get him to use his hands a whole lot better. But he's, um, he's really, I mean, he's put some good stuff on tape already, but um, I think he could really be a force in this league. I'm really excited about about getting him to where he wants to be. You remember what I said last year, or just last year? Whoa, like earlier about defensive linemen. How you got to redshirt them yeah. mainly. Not that guy. One, he he didn't really have the opportunity to do that because yeah. they needed his help. But two, he was already CJ help. Yeah, he was already <laughs> massive. Yeah, like 
he and getting those game reps your freshman year is so important. Yeah. Yeah. The, turning him into a pass rusher, dude. That would be scary. That'd be terrifying. That'd be scary, that'd dude. Be so scary. Yeah, Ray brings it up in the chat. I would love to see CJ Fight be the ASU's version of an Aaron Donald. But, just beast. Yeah, I, I could just totally see in this in this Brian Ward scheme, you bring up, you know, Jordan Crook or something as as showing blitz and you get him to engage with a left guard and somebody then engages with the center and CJ Fight's coming around the left guard. The, Unblocked. The, yeah, and the left tackle is already is already, you know, dealing with Clayton Smith or something and he's coming unblocked like and it's like that Geno like Smith. Pac-Man just it's, chasing them. It's like that Geno Smith play when Aaron Donald's coming. You can literally hear him on the camera go, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> or, oh, God, or something. No, like, oh, he said, oh, my God. <laughs> like, that's the type of player that I think CJ Fight has the potential to be. In. Yes. It, my eyes lit up the moment that Deron said that he wants to I- increase his pass rush ability. And we talked earlier about you lose a guy in BJ Green that had six sacks. There was, again, in the portal, an emphasis to go get guys that can really do it all. Fiasse, the linebacker, he had five and a half sacks, 11 and a half tackles for Jeez. a loss last season as a middle linebacker. Five and a half? Yeah. So that would have been second Yay. on Arizona State. Uh, so you have that guy. You bring back Prince. You bring back Clayton. You add guys in the secondary like a Cole Martin and Xavier Alford that would be scary coming off the edge. And you have a guy in CJ Fight that if he can increase that pass rush, now we're talking about an Arizona State defense that fits the mold of of a we're all about chaos we're all about pressure yeah. we're going to disguise things our 315 pound defensive tackle is going to come off the edge and you can't do anything about exactly. it exactly <laughs> like that's 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 where the unit is at now and that's i think again what brian ward to kind of bring it full circle was talking about in that first bite of like we just need to be more efficient yes now right the system was there but they didn't necessarily have the talent across the board that fit what they wanted to do um, as a unit, what Brian Ward's bread and butter is. And you saw flashes. Yeah, but I think a huge thing is he was being held back by the talent and lack thereof with the the injuries and everything last year by not being able to run his scheme. Brian Ward doesn't want to run a, 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 a soft shell cover two. No. Brian Ward doesn't want to keep everything in front of him. Brian Ward wants, wants, wants you know, two guys to be open, but the quarterback can't get it off because there's six guys in the backfield. Like, mm-hmm. He wants to, to to add confusion. He couldn't get as creative as I'm sure he wanted to. And, and again, you saw them be able to get creative in those games against your Washington States, your Washingtons, and and your UCLA's. But they weren't able to do that all the time. And 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 I, I just really hope. And we can knock on wood all we want, but the injury thing not only isn't as bad as it was last year, but it's the other side. You know, law of averages almost. You had so many injuries last year. Let's just have like a record breaking less amount of injuries. Let's have like. Maybe not. That'd ever. be cool. That'd be like, cool. That'd be awesome. Uh, you really hope it just goes the other way, and then the the football gods don't smite us for bowl banning. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Look, there's certainly a lot to be excited about on Arizona State's offense, which I think gets obviously a lot of love because of some of the skill guys. And, and the people off- are and just, offense is sexy. People yeah, love offense, offense is sexy, but it's it's what offense entertains, defense wins championships. Uh-huh. And I think you special teams, you special plays, special players. Um, <laughs> you have got shout out, shout out, uh, sketch. Uh, but like, there really is now going to be a a mold and a shell for this Arizona State defense. Brian Ward wants offensive coordinators to see the boogeyman on Saturday evenings, oh. and I think that's what you're going to start to get with some. But hey, it's a lucky, it's a good to? thing you're a Sun Devil, man. It's a okay, good thing good. you're a Sun Devil because you don't have to. And I got to check it on my bed. That is so does Noah Fafita and some of those <laughs> other guys, dude. Like it is going to be fun to watch this Arizona State defense. And I personally, again, we've already talked about it. Like this is the best time, right? Everybody's excited. Spring football, new players, and, and you get some of those healthy guys back. There is reason to be excited. Tomorrow it starts spring football for Arizona State. We are going to be live uh, probably between noon, 1230, still TBD. Yeah, I would um, say 1230. Just to be safe. In, in terms of, again, day one of spring football, we'll have sights, sounds, yeah, we'll, everything. We'll be able to talk to Kenny, some of the offensive players. Excited, man. Uh, Excited. And, and some of the offensive coaches. We can talk to Royo again yeah. tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm just stoked. I'm juiced, man. I'm, I'm juiced for some one-on-ones, too. My do they only do that in the fall, though? No, no, no. They did it in the spring. Oh, they did, they did it in the spring. spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if we still have. Do we have that sounder on this it's computer? On, no, it's on that It's on one. the other one. Oh, yeah. that's tough. We'll, we'll definitely bring that yeah, for tomorrow. For sure. But, guys, that is going to do it for today's PHNX Sun Devil Show. Do us one more solid on your way out if you haven't already. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to PHNX Sports. Turn on the notifications. That way you get a little dinger every time that we <laughs> go live. Also, 
head over to gophnx.com today. Check out all the amazing content. Click that Die Hard tab. Like I said earlier, become a PHNX Die Hard. Um, it really is the best Arizona sports community. It's one hell of a time. You can make fun of Toe in the Discord as well. You can. You could absolutely You make that. fun of me, but don't do that because I'm sensitive. Yeah, it's okay, buddy. We're, we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. I, I, no? I, I've tried exposure therapy. It doesn't work. It just makes you cry. Okay. Sorry, man. Sorry to hear okay. about that. But, guys, like I said, that's going to do it for today's show. If you enjoyed the content, give us a follow at phnx underscore sun devils. You can follow me at anthony underscore tochi. You can follow DJ Danielle at Africa Danielle Good across DJ social. Danielle. And you can follow this guy right here, Big Pokey, at Shane Deef. Um, Just scared of the boogeyman as always. And we will see you guys God, Tuesday. But in the meantime, go Devils. And peace. We all silly like the mayor.